Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku. We're in the sports section. We're also on their Android app. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of the fighters I follow, because I believe this guy is extremely talented and has fallen on hard luck, and these are exactly the kind of guys that make great betting plays in the future, because when they earn new opportunities and they get in the ring, you already know that they have the talent to deliver. Well, one of those fighters is Jorge Linares. He's the former champ at super featherweight. Right now, he's fighting at lightweight. In my opinion, this is a guy who has had some bad luck, but who has a lot of talent. And this weekend, he fought Francisco Contreras. Now, let's talk about the fight. It ended by KO in the first round. Linares got the KO. But let's talk about the fight because I think it shows something deeper about boxing, boxing strategy. Now, you've seen older fighters. Juan Manuel Marquez, Carl Froch, Bernard Hopkins, who don't have blazing hand speed. But yet these guys, time after time, beat opponents with better hand speed than them. Right? They're beating faster fighters. You wonder what's going on. Well, what's really going on is that strategy, angles, and punching can actually offset hand speed. Right? Um, you know, boxing actually is a thinking man's game. Right? The, at the highest levels. The fighters understand that it's all about technique and angles, right? Don't get me wrong. Speed, technique, and angles will rule the day. But if the other fighter has a lot of speed but not a lot of technique and can't figure out the angles, then these KG vets like Marquez, Froch, and Hopkins can actually beat them, right? Do you hear that, Jean Pascal? Anyway, let's talk about it. Now, let's say you're fighting a counterpuncher who is fast, right? Has hand speed for days. Let's say you're fighting Jorge Linares, for example. And you understand that if you, I'll turn to the side a little bit. If you throw your left, you understand that the speedster across from you it's going to view that as an opportunity to hit you with the right hand. Because they're counter punchers. These are the kind of holes they're looking for. I throw my left. Let's say my left is hanging out there. What do I have to block a punch from this side? Right? A punch coming in here. My left hand's already out here. Right? It's not back for me to block the punch. So I'm exposed. So against fast guys, skilled fast guys, they're just waiting for me to stick a left hand out there lazily so they can come back with the right counter. Could be a right cross, could be a right hook. Now let me just say, You have some choices, right? The first choice, and this is why CompuBox sometimes doesn't tell the full story. If I'm a slower fighter, and I'm fighting a guy with a cat quick right counter, my first choice is to not throw the left hand, right? Give the counter puncher nothing to counter. In other words, I can just keep my hand up here pinned, right? That counter puncher is not going to have anything, right, to hit. 
First of all, I'm not giving him anything to counter. Understand one strategy in boxing is low volume, right? In a different light, you remember a couple years ago, Nishioka fought Nonito Denier. Everyone knows that Denier has one of boxing's explosive left hooks. So what did Nishioka do? He just kept his right hand up there, right? Hardly threw it, just kept the right hand up there, figuring, I'll take away Denier's number one weapon. I'm going to force Denier to go to plan B. Plan B, Denier, isn't close to plan A, Denier, right? So the first thing is not to throw your left hand. That's one way to defeat a right counter. The other ways involve figuring out, right, the right technique to allow yourself to throw the left hand without being countered, right? Let me back up a moment here, too, right? You've heard me talk about the importance of being able to lead with power shots, right? Understand what that means. It means if I have a tell, if I have a wind up, in other words, if the only way I can throw my power right hand is by first touching you with the left, just for balance purposes, Right? You know, think about these people in life, NFL quarterbacks or major league pitchers who need big windups before they get rid of the ball. Right? In boxing, sometimes you see, especially with non elite fighters, non champions, guys who need to touch you with their other hand just to kind of like find out where your face is. Right? So they touch you with this hand and then they come back with the power shot. Right? Understand that's perilous against a Marquez, a Frotch, or a Hopkins. Because if I lazily come in, and if I touch you with this hand, and I'm low, what's going to prevent these veterans from coming over my lazy tail punch? Right? Which isn't intended to do anything other than freeze you. What's to prevent guys from coming over that punch with their power shots? So it's better. It's more advanced to me. If I have a big right hand, if I'm able to deliver that right hand without the tell, in other words, if I can literally, you know, figure out how to come in with the power shot without giving you anything to counter before that power shot. Right? We'll save that thought for another video. But let's get back to this one. Right? I have a left hand. I'm facing you. And I want to throw that left hand, but I don't want to get countered. Well, here's where it gets interesting. Here's where we get into technique and angles. So I've got to develop a technique that doesn't leave me exposed. Now, we know the tender spots. Two of the most tender spots on the body for boxers. The chin, you don't want to get hit there. And the temple, you don't want to get hit there. Right? The chin will put you to sleep. The temple will kill your balance. So you'll be there. You might even be conscious in front of the guy, but unable to dodge punches. So, you need to learn how to throw the left hand without exposing your chin and your temple. This is foundational boxing. So rather than me coming in and lazily throwing a left hand, right, where I'm totally exposed, now I want to tuck my head, chin's gone, right? Then I want to raise the left hand, right? In other words, this is the angle. No chin, no temple that I want to give the other fighter. So, of course, when I come in, I need to come in low because I don't want to completely expose my rib cage. I want to come in low, and when I'm throwing that left hand, I want to have it such that the angle, 
kills his ability to counter. You can't even see my head right now. Right then, of course, I don't want to be foolish. I don't want to let that left hand stay out there so that a fast fighter can go to town. I want to throw it, then I want to pull it back. Right? I want it back for defensive purposes. I see a lot of fighters lazily keeping punches out there. That's when you're really getting countered and messed up. Right? Let me go one step further. and You see this with Bernard Hopkins all the time. Not only do I want to hide my head when I throw the left, but if I know the other guy is coming back from the right side, I want to learn a technique where when I throw the punch, I'm also rolling. Right? I'm rolling to the right. Because, of course, I'm rolling away from whatever punch he's throwing back. Right? The uh, skillful fighters have figured out how to keep their, you know, chins tucked and how to do things the right way. You'd be surprised, and I'm serious about this, how many elite fighters, because they haven't faced the right competition or perhaps because the guys in their corner aren't doing a great job, you'd be surprised how many elite fighters don't protect their chins. You remember Jermaine Taylor. Go back and look at the tapes of Jermaine Taylor. Jermaine Taylor had his chin out here, right? He was a great jabber. And let me just say, a stiff jab. If you have a stiff jab that can back up an opponent and is accurate, then that makes it very hard for them to be even close enough to you to counter. Just make sure they don't have upper body movement to slip the jab. But all I can say is Jermaine Taylor kept his chin up. It was a walking advertisement to get hit. The problem was Taylor was fast and Taylor had a good jab. My point to you though is keeping your chin up doesn't age well because sooner or later the hand speed diminishes somewhat. Sooner or later even if the hand speed doesn't diminish the reflexes diminish a little bit. And so the guys who are in the realm of being athletic and not technical, all I'm saying is once that athleticism fades, you're in trouble. So what you'll notice in boxing is that a lot of these older boxers who have been in the game a long time and who have, you know, championship level competition, right, the Tarvers, the guys I named, the Marquezes, the Frotches, the, the Hopkinses. These guys all have technical brilliance where they're not in the ring relying on hand speed. They're relying on what I'm talking about, right? Techniques that literally hide their head, right? Techniques where, you know, they're leading with power shots, where another technique is, you hide your head, then you tie up the opponent, right? These are the guys who seem to defy age, right? Just food for thought. So let me just say this. I'm watching the Francisco Contreras, Jorge Linares fight. And you know the deal. Contreras has a little bit of a wind-up before he throws power shots. And of course, he's facing a guy with blinding hand speed who hits with power. Now, Contreras had been knocked out in the past. If you go through his record, you're gonna see he'd been knocked down in several fights. He had to be carried out of the ring on a stretcher after he fought Sharif Bogare. So you knew a precision sharpshooter with hand speed, like Jorge Linares, was hoping to test Contreras' chin. The end of the fight's interesting. Contreras is trying to set up a right hand. The guys who often don't have the technical brilliance 
are guys who are not gut punchers, right? Because for them, boxing is as simple as showing up, hitting you, dropping you, knocking you out, leaving the ring, collecting a paycheck, right? Many of the fighters who have the technical brilliance are guys who, quite frankly, have had to learn the technical brilliance to offset shortcomings in their game, right? Bernard Hopkins is not a puncher. Carl Frotch doesn't have the fastest hand speed in the sport, right? Juan Manuel Marquez, simply put, is not the athlete many of the guys he's fighting are, right? You know, Manny Pacquiao is a much better athlete than one Manuel Marquez. If the two guys were competing in a decathlon, my money would be on Manny Pacquiao, right? So Marquez, an older fighter, fighting younger men who are faster. And keep in mind, Marquez doesn't quite have the blinding foot speed, right? Has had to develop a style that allows him to go the distance against men like Manny Pacquiao and Timothy Bradley, right? And so understand, these cagey guys are literally coming up with ways to offset deficiencies. Knockout punchers who have high KO ratios typically don't view themselves as flawed, right? It's the fighters who view themselves as mortal who actually come up with techniques to give themselves a better chance. So Francisco Contreras is in there, right? Obviously believing in his right hand. Here's the problem. He needs to touch you with the left before he throws the power right hand. And of course, he's touching you with the left low. You see the problem. So he throws the left a couple of times in that first round at Jorge Linares. It's toward the end of the first round. He throws the left. Linares, who is controlled, keep in mind, Linares has fast foot speed. You can tell something's up in the fight because Linares is curiously standing right in front of Contreras. Keep in mind, usually Linares is moving around the ring. This fight, Linares has a game plan. He's standing right in front of Contreras. So you know the deal. Contreras throws a lazy left. His hand's down here. Linares comes right in with the right counter. Understand, Contreras, who's setting up a right hand, big mistake, isn't even rolling away from the punch. He's not cagey. He's not throwing the left and ducky, right? He's not throwing the punch high so that it's hidden, right? His head's hidden. No, he throws the punch low against a guy with power and hand speed. Linares comes right over the top, hits him in the temple. Folks, the fight is over, right? The lights are out. K.O. Jorge Linares, right? Let me also make a couple of points too. Your choice of punch is also important. So, rather than throw a lazy jab low, right? If you don't want to throw a jab, rather than throw a jab high and hide your head, understand one way to do things is to throw a left hook because you'd be surprised how a high left hook can actually hide your head, right? Food for thought. The masters of the sport have figured it out. I'm just telling you, at the elite levels, boxing is more about technique and angles than anything else, right? I'm positive. In the George Groves, Carl Frotch fight, Carl Frotch is going to be there relying on technique and angles, right? And skill, right? Um, I'm positive George Groves is going to be in there with the superior hand speed and with movement to change the angles, right? The reason why I think Groves is a live underdog is because I also think Groves is technical.
but Groves at 25 is clearly not as technical as he would be in his 30s, which is where Carl Frotch is. And Frotch, of course, is one of the sport's most technical fighters. So when you are watching an old, slower lion deconstructing a younger, faster guy, just ask yourself about the angles, right? If you see the KG veteran not throwing certain punches, just ask yourself why. Even punch selection is interesting. Let's say I'm slick and I'm facing Carl Frotch. And let's say when I throw my left, I'm rolling low, right? I'm rolling low away from Frotch's right hand because Frotch's right hand dominant. Understand, Frotch also throws an excellent left uppercut, right? That's how you offset a guy rolling low, right? It's with that uppercut, right? A guy who's low can get hit with an uppercut. This is where you get different philosophies in the sport on defense, right? What I want you to do is to look at films of Archie Moore, the old mongoose, his defense, right? Look at George Foreman. By the way, it's the same defense, folks, because Archie Moore actually used to be in Foreman's corner. And look at Evander Holifield when he gets inside. One of the things he does is this. We'll understand the beauty of this. It blocks uppercuts at least it gives you a hand guard on the uppercut and also from the side it actually protects your face from the kind of right counters that I've talked about right most boxers fight like this just understand elite fighters will alternate right look at Floyd Mayweather on the ropes there'll be times where Floyd's leaning on the ring and he shifts to this, right? Understand, it may look random, but there is a method behind the madness, right? That's the sport to me on the top shelf. Let me hear from you. I hope you keep an eye on Jorge Linares. Understand, you know, the best opportunities gambling-wise are when you see a talented guy who has fallen on bad luck, but who still has the talent. And you know that sooner or later, He's going to get a shot at the title. Jorge Linares is worth a look. Thanks for stopping by.